Hello, folks. Uh, hello, folks. This is Michael Jacobs in the office. Got a little screen recording for you on the sequence here, or the velocities, whatever you want to call it, of the lead arm and the thorax. And I started posting up a couple of uh, example graphs. And just a quick explanation, I'll just make this a minute or so. Uh, what we have here on the left is we have our four to six handicap, who's a good golfer, and we have his lead arm and his thorax, and on the right we have a top player in the world. Uh, red on the graph is the thorax, and green is the lead arm. This black line, this defined black line that you're seeing right here, is the is the top of the backswing. So if I just zoom out of this for a second and you can see that's the top of the backswing. And what we're calling the top of the backswing here is where the club changes direction. So this is exactly where the club is changing direction. So long before the club changes direction in great players, their pelvis and thorax change direction, then the lead arm, then the club. So right here you could see uh, when we look at the tour player where I have my cursor, you can see his thorax is crossing over from backswing to downswing before the top, lead arm just before the top, and then you could see they start to move at the same speed, same velocity here, and then the lead arm is catching a little higher acceleration rate and then branches off. Prior to the top of the swing, prior to where the club changed direction, you could see a large uh, separation here, a large space. So what this shows us is that this lead arm is still making some sort of a backswing here as it starts to then move towards changing directions as the velocity starts to change. You can see the thorax has already done that. So here's the stretch. So here's the stretch between the thorax and the lead arm and then we could see how the lead arm closes the gap on the stretch and then uh, we could see the timing from then on in until the point of contact, both peaking in the second half of the downswing, and then as the other as the segment uh, more distal starts to pour on, it starts to slow down the other segment. If we look at the six handicapper here, we could see that in the transition from backswing to downswing, you can see there's no defined gap like we have here in, in the better player. So you can see that there's a little tiny stretch. Uh, but not much between red and green. You can see how long that stretch takes place. And you can see here that at this point in the swing where I have my cursor, the thorax, the red line, still has a higher acceleration rate than the green. So right here, the thorax is still moving faster than the green. And you can see clearly in the better player how green is starting to climb above the red line. Now everybody says, boy, those lines look really close, but they are some crucial lines. Uh, just a couple other things to take note of, uh, the lack of separation here. And also, if you look at this line, this black line, which signifies the top of the backswing of the club, is you can see how much closer the green is to crossing over into the downswing at the same time as the club. And if I zoom in here on the better player and See if I can just get this so you can see it. Sometimes you got to get really zoomed in on this graph. So here's, I hope you can see my cursor. Here's the top of the swing of the club. You can see thorax crossed over right there, then lead arm. Here, you can see the lead arm is a lot closer to when the club's uh, crossing over. So yeah, I mean, just these little narrow pieces in the graph mean a lot and separate the level of player. And then here you can see clearly uh, as the downswing progresses, uh, a, a lot different in the acceleration rate of the lead arm and how close this, these two lines are at this point compared to the higher length player. So this golfer is doing a lot of tugging, we call it, or a lot of arm dragging the hand, dragging the, a lot of thorax dragging the arm. And you can see it clearly in the, in, in the mounts and peaks of the graph and the lack of noticeable deceleration in the lead arm and the thorax uh, before impact. So that's a little rundown of the graph, some place you can look at. I thought it would be an interesting thing to share as we look through the data pool. And this is one area where level of player is, is clearly defined. Uh, and this player we have here hits the ball a long way and still 
some work to be done. Hope you enjoyed.